Welcome back to the Zonal Statistics tutorial by Open Source Options. Um, if you haven't seen the previous two videos, go ahead and watch those so you can get caught up. In the last video, we got to the point where we just created a temporary data source, a vector data source to hold a polygon. We we're then going to rasterize so we can line it up with raster pixels and get the statistics from those raster pixels. Okay, so in this video, we might get to rasterizing the layer, but what we're for sure going to do is we're for sure going to set up the geotransform and the dimensions of the new raster. It's going to be this rasterized polygon layer. Okay, um, so just like I said, it's going to be a little tedious for some of these things, but that's okay. Um, just stick with me and we will get through this. All right, so I'm going to uh, pause real quick and I'm going to save this script so that I don't lose it. Okay, so I've got my script saved. I'm going to close my uh, Python console real quick to just show you what we're going to be doing here so that you can kind of understand this a little better. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in on this uh, polygon here. And so you'll notice this polygon only covers a portion of this larger raster data set. And now in order to save memory when I do this and make this go faster, I don't want to create a polygon or I don't want to create a raster from this polygon that's going to take up the entire raster data set. I only need a raster that's going to cover the area that this polygon covers. Okay, and if I zoom in really close on this raster, I don't know if you can see it too well here. Um, you can't see the pixels real great. Oh, you can start to see some, some square pixels here, right? My new raster that I create for this needs to line up exactly with these pixels. Okay. So if I have a top left corner, my top left corner of this raster I'm creating to uh, rasterize this polygon, it needs to line up exactly with the corner of one of these pixels so that we have exact overlap. If we don't have exact overlap, then we're going to introduce additional error into our zonal statistics analysis. So in this video, what we're doing is setting that up, is getting those lined up exactly right. So I'm going to go back up. I'm going to open my Python console again with my code here. And so we're going to create a function. And what it's going to take is we're going to give it the bounding box. So when I say bounding box, I mean the maximum, the maximum x and y coordinates of this polygon. So this is our max, or this is our, this is our minimum x, our maximum x, our minimum y, and our maximum y. That's what the bounding box is going to give. It's going to give us those four numbers, min x, max x, min y, max y. Um, and we're going to create a raster that only covers that area. Okay, so let's go back and let's go to plugins and let's go back to the Python console. And so we're going to create a function that will do this, okay? And I'm going to come up here and put it right at the top. And we'll use def to create a function. And I'm going to call this bbox to, we'll call it bounding box to offsets. Okay. And we're going to need to add some arguments to this. We need to have a colon on the end of that. All right. So in this function, we need to import a bounding box. We'll abbreviate it bbox. And we need to have a geotransform. Okay, so I'm going to input bbox and geotransform. Okay, and what this is going to return, and I'm just going to put it in here now, is it is going to return um, rows and columns. So it's going to return a starting row, an ending row, a starting column, and an ending column. Okay, and so that'll give us a chunk of columns and rows to take out of our existing raster. And so we're going to do row one, row two, column one, column two. Okay. So that's going to be what it returns. We don't have any code in there to do this yet because I need to show you a little bit more uh, of what I'm talking about. All right. So what we're going to have is we're going to have uh, our bounding box, two offsets. So it's going to give us offsets, which is going to equal our bounding box, 
to offsets, and we need to put our arguments in here. So that's going to be our geotransform for the raster. And here we want to put in those, like I said, those minimum maximum coordinates. And so we're going to go p feet dot get geometry reference and get envelope. And so get envelope will give us um, those coordinates. And I'm just going to hit backslash enter here to bump that on a new line so we can see it. Okay. All right, so we have our geometry reference, which is going to return the minimum x, the maximum x, the minimum y, and the maximum y. Um, and then we have our geotransform for our raster. And now we're going to use the bounding box to offsets to line this up. Okay, so let me tell you what, let me show you what I'm talking about a little more. I'm going to once again save this and close my console. I'm going to zoom up to my raster. Okay, and hopefully we can see the pixels a little bit. It's kind of hard to see them with this. Let's see if I can find a spot where they're easy to see. Okay, so you can see we have these squares. We have some pixels here, okay? You can see these pixels. Now let's say, for example, the, you can own, only the area on my screen is what we have. So let's say my raster starts here. You can see this pixel right here is the first one. This is row zero, column zero. Row zero, column one. Row zero, column two. Okay, row zero, column zero, row one, column zero, row two, column zero. Okay, so those are kind of where our raster starts. And so if we want to reference this pixel here, it would be row one, column one. And what we're doing is we are doing with this bounding box to offsets, we're finding these offset numbers, right? We're finding the number of pixels that are offset. And so if my polygon started right here, it would start at row two, column two would be the first pixel inside my polygon. So we're trying to find the chunk of pixels that the polygon covers. So let's say it started here, that's row two, column two, and then we come down to here, that's row four, column four, right? And so we just take this, these, these nine pixels here, and that would be the new raster data we had. And by doing this, we subset the raster data. It takes up a lot less memory, and it makes it a lot easier and more efficient to do our zonal statistics. Okay, so let's pull our code back up. Okay, and so that's what we're returning here: is the row offset, the starting row, the ending row, the starting column, and the ending column. And we're giving in the bounding box, which is the minimum x, the maximum x, the minimum y, and the maximum y, and our geo transform, which tells us where our raster starts and ends and how big the pixels are. Okay, so now we can start to calculate where these offsets are going to be. So let's start with the columns. So the first column, I'm just going to put some of this in. It's going to call one, call two, and then we'll do row one, row two. Okay, now we want to make sure these are integers, right? Because offsets are going to be integers. They're going to be a, a single number that represents the row in the column. Okay. And so we've got our bounding box. And the first number in our bounding box is going to be uh, an x coordinate. So remember, columns are x coordinates, okay? Rows are y coordinates. And it's going to be our maximum x coordinate. From the maximum x coordinate, we want to subtract the top left x coordinate of our bounding box of our raster, which is going to be GOT zero. Okay, so that gives us the distance um, between our maximum y. Or sorry, this is our minimum x. So this gives us our minimum x and the top left corner. So we're going to get a distance between them. Okay. And then we want to divide it by the cell width, which is going to be GOT1. And I forgot some parentheses here, so we need to put this there. Oops. We need two parentheses, so we do this calculation first, then we do this calculation. All right. Okay, so now for our next column, we're going to do integer b box one. 
minus got0 divided by got1 and then we need to add one to that okay so this is going to be our minimum column it's going to be the farthest left column which is going to be sorry i'm going to say this because our minimum x coordinate is here our maximum x coordinate is here top left corner here top left corner here okay and we need to push this out by one so that we include the cell that has the maximum value in it okay this is going to put us far to the left it's going to put us plus one to the right which is what we want okay and now we're going to do the same thing with our rows basically so we're going to do an integer oh, we need another one so we're going to do bounding box three which is going to give us our maximum y coordinate now maximum y coordinate means the one that's closest to the top of our raster okay so it's going to uh, a higher y coordinate is going to give you a lower row value we're going to do geotransform 3, which gives us our top left y coordinate. We want to divide it by geotransform 5, which gives us our um, cell height. And now we're going to do integer b box uh, 2, which is going to be our minimum y coordinate, so the lowest x coordinate, the lowest y coordinate, which gives us a higher row number. Divided by GOT3, divided by GOT5. And once again, we're going to add one, so it pushes it down one extra column, or one extra row. All right, so it's going to return our rows and our columns. And we just, we're just going to go ahead and test this, okay? So let's just come down here and let's click Print Offsets. And I'm going to uh, save this, and I'm going to click Run. And so when I click Run, and I'll just clear this too so we can start fresh. So when I click run, what should happen is we should get uh, two, we should have two features, so we should have two lists of offsets that we get. So let's go ahead and click run. Okay, and we're looping through a lot of features. Um, and I can tell you the reason for that. It is that, and you can see these are all the same right now. And we need to stop this. All right, so I crashed QGIS, and maybe some of you recognized why I created an endless loop, and I'll show you how that happened. Let me open this back up, open the Python console back up. I'm um, the editor. We should have everything here. We've got our, whoops, did not mean to dock that. Got our editor here. Let's open this up. I'm going to, so I'll show you, we need to add one thing before you click run on this. Okay. Okay. So I have layer get next feature here. And so it got the next feature um, from this layer. What I didn't do was I need to add it again down here. So I need to do pfeet equals lyr dot get next feature. If I don't do that, this is always going to be true because it got the first feature, but we never updated it. Oh, I don't have the colon on the end of that. Okay. And so if I don't do that, then I'm in trouble. Okay. So once you do that, you will not have an endless loop. We can now click run. And you can see we get two um, lists of offsets, which give us our starting row, our ending row, our starting column, and our ending column. Okay, and so there are the offsets, and that is how we're, that's what we're going to use to create a, a new raster of the right size to hold all the data that overlaps our polygon. Okay, all right. So I know that was a lot. We've done a, a lot of kind of tedious work here to not get very far. But this is going to be good. You're going to see kind of how these algorithms are developed, and it'll kind of give you an insight um, into how to develop your own algorithms for things you might want to do. So I'm going to stop it here. We're 15 minutes into this. I'm going to stop it here. And in the next video, we will get to actually rasterizing the polygon so that we have the overlaying data. Uh, thanks for watching. I will post code for this on my website, on opensourceoptions.com. Um, I'll include a link to that in the description um, or in the cards above. So just look for that uh, when the video launches and that way you can have the code. The data layers I'm not gonna post because like I said, I've said before, um, it costs me money to host and post those. These data are available, like the, the DEM data are available for free. Um, I've showed you in a previous video how you can download those. 
Um, and you can make your own polygons or load up your own polygons that you want to do zonal stats for.